Well, hey guys, welcome back. And in case you didn't know, uh, apparently the new trailer for Loki dropped earlier today. And, you know, I actually watched it. Uh, it's not terrible. It's kind of like the show was. It started off kind of slow, ended on a good foot. Um, but it just really never had me, like, drawn in caring about the show too much. So, trailers had pretty decent reactions. People have actually seemed to be enjoying it, which is fine. I mean, look, it's not like I want everything in Marvel to be doing poor. It's, it's just that I think Disney really needs a rude awakening, if things are going to change. But despite the fact that the trailer has been pretty positively received, it doesn't change the fact that, uh, you know, Disney, Marvel, they've had their own share of, uh, of slumps, duds, things that have cost them millions of dollars in lost revenue, uh, you know, lost faith from, oh, you know, longtime uh, fans of the franchises and families who've traditionally taken their kids to see Disney films in the theater who've just kind of bowed out. So then we saw this piece of uh, news earlier, I think this actually broke yesterday, about how the IMAX theaters are not going to be playing the Marvels. Uh, they're actually going to give all their screens to Dune 2, which I think is still on track to be released this year. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to come out by the end of this year, if not the beginning of next year. I know the Marvels got pushed back, and honestly, they just need to send that one out to die, kind of like they did with this Haunted Mansion movie. They just need to cut their, their losses with this one and send it out there. But, you know, their biggest dud recently, w without su surprise, really, to be honest, um, the Secret Invasion TV show. And spoiler alert, <laughs> apparently uh, Don Cheadle's character War Machine is a scroll and has been one since Civil War. Now, I'm not watching this show. It seemed completely boring. Like, even if I wanted to watch it to review it, I don't think I'd be able to stay, uh, stay awake for it. But apparently Don Cheadle at some point was replaced by a scroll. I don't know if this show takes place before in-game, during in-game, after in-game. I have no idea, but that's apparently a thing. Um, even outlets like Salon are covering why people are just not interested in these shows. Uh, talking about how the MCU has lost its relevancy, how people are just fed up with it. They're, they have, call it superhero fatigue, call it uh, anger towards Disney, whatever you want to call it. They're just over it. And uh, from the director, we've got why Secret Invasion's finale is the worst MCU Disney Plus ending yet, and it's it's true. If you go back to the Rotten Tomato scores, I mean, hell, the uh, last episode of Secret Invasion has a, I think it's an 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know, we'll get into it in a minute. Just a lot of problems with this TV show, a lot of problems with the storyline, a lot of problems with how they treated Nick Fury in it, because traditionally Nick Fury has been one of the Tent poles of the Marvel franchise. No, he's not one of the superheroes, but he's one of those characters that people just love. They gravitate towards him. Look, I'm not the biggest Samuel L. Jackson fan. I think he's a terrible actor. I know, unpopular opinion. But people like Samuel Jackson. For whatever the reason is, people are drawn to him naturally. Now we have the actual uh, director from Secret Invasion basically blaming the fans for not liking his crap show. The quote from him, uh, Bounding into Comics, is where we're getting this article from. The quote from him is basically, is it our job to fulfill their expectations or to tell the story that we're telling? And I understand, look, I understand where this, this mentality comes from. It's not that I think it's completely wrong. I just think it's very uh, out of touch for these directors, showrunners, writers, to not understand the problem with the mentality. At least if you can have the mentality, but don't say it out loud. Just don't. So the article goes on to say, despite the resoundingly negative response to the scroll-based series, Marvel's Secret Invasion director Ali Sal Salim, I don't know how to say that, has admitted that he does not feel bad about the show's poor reception, particularly as he believes the devoted, even rabid nature of the franchise fan base does not lend itself to productive discussions around its various entries. Nice way of saying, look, these fans are psychopaths and I just can't make anything that's going to make them happy, which is not true. We did not have these kind of discussions before Endgame. We did not. Maybe what changed was Tony Stark dying. Maybe we were all just done with Endgame wrapping pretty much everything up. Who knows? It, it could be that, you know, there was less political messaging. It could be that it was more subversive. I don't know what the answer is. But the reality is this is not a... Uh, recurring theme this has been the last four or five years of marvel where people are just kind of fed up with all the messaging they're fed up with the the subpar quality of both the effects and the storytelling in these movies 
The article goes on to say, between its Jake Skywalkering of Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury, its introduction of Amelia Clark's Gia as the literal strongest MCU hero ever, and its absolute wasting of the original eponymous comic book storyline, one of Marvel Comics' last good stories and whose original plot could have easily lent itself to a full MCU phase if done properly, Secret Invasion has been nothing short of a disaster for the reputation of the once esteemed cinematic universe. And yeah, you can see right here. Tomato Meter has the first season both at 55% for critics and for audience score, with an 8% for the final season, or the uh, the season finale. Um, yeah, so you've got, down here on the article, it says, Yet despite these scores, leaving Secret Invasion as the fifth most panned entry in the MCU, coming in behind Eternals, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Marvel's Iron Fist, and Marvel's Inhumans. Wow, that's a terrible list of uh, shows and movies to follow. This reception has apparently left the aforementioned Salim unfazed. Asked during a post-finale interview, he revealed, oh, I don't read reviews. Well, maybe he should, I don't know. With all due respect, for me, I view all the storytelling work I do as a dialogue with an audience. When the show is finished and put up on the screen, that's my half of the dialogue. And the audience then starts their half of the response to it. I think that's valuable, but I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. Basically, this is a way of saying, look, I got paid. I don't give a crap. Whatever they're going to do, they're going to do it anyways. I can't make anybody happy, which is, again, not true. I don't feel bad about mixed reviews. If you had unanimously good reviews, every movie would gross $10 billion trillion, right? No, because different, different films are for different people. Different people have different tastes. And it's like, look, not everyone's a Martin Scorsese fan. Not everybody likes... Uh, I mean, look at gaming. Not everybody's gonna. Not everybody loves Last of Us. That certain types of games appeal to certain types of people. Same thing with TV shows, movies, books, music. And guess what? You can have ten different styles of music that appeal to ten different types of people that they all love an album by a certain band. That doesn't mean that if you mix up the albums and give them to random people, that everybody's going to appreciate it equally. You can have generally positive reviews from a core fan base. That's a stupid statement to say. So he just goes on to just kind of wrap up his thoughts about the, the rabid fan base. And look, this is the kind of disrespect that Marvel fans are getting. Look, I, I, I've never made any uh, attempt to hide the fact that I am not a comic book reader. I'm, I've never read comic books in my life. I am a MCU um, enjoyer. You know, I, I watched all the MCU films up to Endgame, and then I got to the point where I watched a couple of the shows and I'm done. I have no use for it. I have no interest in it anymore because they ruined the story. And maybe they wrapped up the story and the story just needs to end. Whatever you want to say about it. The fact of the matter is the comic book fans are the ones who are getting gypped in all this because they're the ones who look at these stories they've been reading for 10, 20, 30 years and saying it could have been so much better. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you have any respect for us? And basically Marvel and the directors of these films are coming out and saying, well, screw you. We didn't make it for you. We made it for ourselves. But, you know, that's kind of where we are with Disney and Marvel. That's the kind of mentality we have these days. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you even watching this garbage? I certainly am not. We will see you guys in the next one. And again, thanks for watching.